Hey guys, absolutely awesome to have you here today. And I tell you what, I get a question a lot. People see me using my flight scope radar, which is a $12,000 machine. They see me using my Foresight GC quad, which I just got, this is an $18,000 launch monitor. And I think, how can I get those kind of numbers for my own game without spending a fortune? And I get a lot of questions about this device here. This is a Voice Caddy SC200. This is a Swing Caddy 2, and it's a little small launch monitor, about the size of a cell, cell phone, just a little bit bigger. You place that behind your ball, and it's gonna tell you your club head speed, it's gonna tell you your carry distance or how far the ball went, it's gonna tell you your smash factor, just like my $18,000 machine here, and they claim that it's pretty accurate. So I gotta tell you, I'm pretty skeptical about this little device. I'm not quite sure if it's accurate enough. We're gonna put it to the test, and then we're also gonna show you the features that this has and whether or not it's right for your game. All right, so before we hit a couple shots, let's talk about exactly what this thing does. It's simply got a little on-off switch on the side of it. As it turns on, this is a neat little feature here that I think is pretty cool. It has the barometric pressure and the temperature outside. So it knows if you're at sea level or if you're higher altitude, what the air pressure is, and then it can adjust your carry distance. So it actually makes it a little bit more accurate based on where you play. So if you're in Colorado and the ball goes 10% farther, it's actually gonna spit out the numbers for where you're at in Colorado. If you're down in Florida where it goes a little shorter, it's gonna spit out those shorter numbers. So what it also measures here at the top, it's gonna tell you your, your carry distance. Then it goes down to your swing speed, how fast you're swinging, that's very valuable. We'll talk to, about that in a little bit, how you would use this to improve your game. Your ball speed, so that's a very important factor. So let's say I swing 100 miles an hour, if I hit that ball really solid, it could come off as fast as 150 miles an hour. If I don't hit it very solid, then it's gonna come off a little slower than that. So that's the last number that comes down here, which is the smash factor. And that's telling you how solid you're hitting that ball. So not only do you know how fast you're, you're swinging, but you know how efficiently you're getting that swing speed to be delivered to the golf ball. So we can go ahead, when you set this down, all you do, you just put a couple batteries, four AAA batteries in the back. You set it right at about four and a half feet behind your machine or behind your golf ball here, and I set it up going down my target line. Now it also comes with a little remote, so when I'm using this, I can toggle through and see, you know, change my clubs and change this to a driver, and it's toggling over to driver mode. I can even change the loft of my driver. Uh, right now I have it set up to 9.5, just like my club. So I can change this, just put it in my pocket as I'm practicing, and I can change the variety of settings it has on here, which we'll get to later. But let's go ahead and throw it to the test now. Again. $18,000 machine, very, very accurate. Four cameras in this machine that shoot over 10,000 frames a second that measure the golf ball as it leaves the tee. This device, a $300 radar. So if this is anywhere near as accurate, then I will be pretty surprised, pretty shocked. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, hammered that one right down the middle. Should be going right down the center. My big machine here says 117 club head speed. My smash factor was 1.43. My carry was 292. And let's see what this smaller machine says. So 295 carry, it says on this machine. That's pretty cool. It says my club head speed is 114. This says 117, so a few yards off, not, or not too, too much of a difference there. My ball speed is 166 on this one. My ball speed on this one is 167. And then my smash factor, 1.45. This one says 1.43. So pretty cool, pretty daggone, pretty accurate. And I actually, I am kind of joking around here a little bit as far as um, not believing this one's gonna work. I've actually tested this one quite a bit in the past. And the company themselves actually took an independent tester and there's a company that has an Iron Byron. So what this is, this is a robot that swings the club and they tested this device to see its accuracy and they found it to be extremely, extremely accurate. I've also thrown it on my, my flight scope to kind of compare the numbers and my GC quad, it's amazing how close these are. It can be a yard or two off, but when you're talking about a 295 yard carry or 170 yard carry, if it's one yard off, nobody's really that accurate anyways. It's not gonna matter much in your testing. And even then it's hard to know, is it this machine that's off or this machine that's off? Because both of those are making some kind of calculations. So I've found it to be astonishingly accurate with throughout the bag. Whether you're working on wedges, irons, or driver, both of these are within probably 1% of each other, and this one is way, way less expensive. So now let's go through 
you know, if we're going to practice on this, what are some of the features that it has and how can we actually use this to improve our game and not just kind of spit out some numbers? How can we actually get better with this machine? Because I think there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this. All right, so let's put this thing to work. Now on our first swing, carry distance was 295. My club head speed was 114. You can see a picture of that now. Now let's imagine we're going to go to practice mode. So you'll see on the side of this device, the very top button, it's mode. And I can switch between practice, target, and approach. For now, we're going to stick to the practice mode. And basically what this is going to do is just spit out those parameters that I just talked about. Again, I can use my remote to toggle between clubs. But let's go ahead and swing the driver. Let's see if I can increase my club head speed here a little bit. And one thing that's really cool about this, and that I've, this is how I increase my own club head speed, is I would always have some kind of device sitting behind my golf ball whether it's a big fancy device or, or just a, a simple radar like this one. So that if I make a change in my swing, I know, is it helping my club head speed? Am I swinging faster or is it not helping my club head speed and I'm actually swinging slower? One of the things we talk about in the top speed golf system a lot is as I'm making my turn, if I really want to crank one, I'm going to go ahead and let my left heel lift slightly off the ground. I'm going to let my hips and my shoulders turn a little bit extra. So now I can really get this big turn. As long as I let my hips rotate, I don't have to be very flexible to still make this really good turn in the backswing. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna pretend I'm out on the driving range practicing. I'm gonna work on what we call that power turn, and I'm really gonna try to hammer one. We're gonna see immediately, did my swing speed and my carry distance go up, or did my swing speed and my carry distance go down, and I can know if I'm on the right track. So let's go ahead and really try to hit a nice one here. All right, I swung a little harder on that one. Just down the left center of the fairway, went ahead and tried to give it a pretty good rip on there. On this one, my club head speed went from 117 to 122. Didn't hit it the most solid, so I didn't necessarily just connect on that one, but still pretty good. 172 miles an hour of ball speed. My total carry distance on this one is saying 290, let's see what it says on there again, 296. This one, it says my carry is 305. Get it read it a little bit longer. Swing speed of 119, right around there in the same ballpark. Remember last time it was 114. This time when I swung faster and I verified that I swung it faster on this big expensive machine, it showed that it went faster on here too. 1.44 smash, 1.71 ball speed. I mean, these are, these are so close together, it's amazing. So now I can take a device like this, I can try things out in my swing and I know, is it actually helping? Am I actually getting more swing speed? Am I actually getting more carry distance? or am I not actually getting the things that I want? So it gives you the proof, so you know, am I on the right track or not? So you can see again, here are these numbers. We can see that those, as I swung a little faster, I did that power turn, all those numbers went up slightly. All right, so now let's switch this over to target mode. So I'm gonna switch the mode on the side. That switches to target mode here on the top. And now I can set with these, these buttons on the side or with my remote, I can set the distance that I wanna practice. Let's imagine that I wanna practice my eight iron. I'm gonna put it right at 165 yards, or let's actually go to seven iron. That's the club I have out. Let's go 175. I have the club set, I have my target distance set. Now all I have to do is set this right behind my, the area I'm gonna be hitting in. I can throw a ball down. And just like we said, when I tested it before, it was very accurate with both the irons and the woods. Let's go ahead and try it out though. Now seven iron, I'm shooting for 175. Let's see if there's much difference in these machines. A little bit chunky on that one. Hit it nice and straight though. That's probably closer to 170 if I had to guess. 95 miles an hour club head speed. My total distance on this one, 176 is what it's reading out. This one is saying right at 175. So it's actually saying that it read right on the number that I was trying to go to. So my score, a perfect 10 on there. So now I can keep on practicing that and vary up those clubs. If you're going through an entire range session, let's work through the bag, hit three or four or five different clubs. And now it's like you're actually playing out on the course. All right guys, so one of my absolute favorite drills is a wedge drill. Now you can see if you switch from approach mode, we click this mode button one more time on the side and that's gonna go to or excuse me, we go from target mode to approach mode, that's gonna give me random numbers. So right now it's saying 80 yards, that's my target distance. When I go to the next one, it's gonna be 99 and then 51. Just give me a random number every single time. Now what the research out there has shown is that if you try to practice these random numbers, 
you increase your feel and ability to hit certain distances much faster than if you just hit the same number over and over again. Again, it's making it exactly like it is on the course. So again, I set this up four and a half feet behind my ball. One thing I'll say on these wedges, it does sometimes have a little bit of difficulty if there's a big divot flying up. If you pick these pretty clean, it's gonna read it very accurately. Sometimes you can get a, a divot in there. Let's start out with this 51 yard shot. Again, I have my, my GC quad. It's gonna read it out and let's see how I do. That's maybe a little bit long. Let's see what this machine say. That says 60 yards and this one says exactly 60 yards again also. So I got scored seven points for hitting 60 instead of 50 and it automatically switched to 90 yards, which is my next drill. So it's really, really cool in helping you develop that wedge distance. And again, if you get a couple misreads in there, that's okay, it's probably the divot getting in the way. If you're hitting off a mat, it's gonna work perfectly with that. Believe it or not, some of these really, really expensive machines struggle when you start to take a divot also, your track man, your flight scopes, and your GC quads. Now my absolute favorite thing about this device is measuring your swing speed with the big stick. That's gonna help your game more than anything. And this device is incredibly accurate within a mile an hour or two on almost every swing I've made in the testing that I've done. Also shows you your carry distance. So I got this one for free. They sent it to me, said, hey, test it out, see if you like it. I liked it so much, I bought eight more for my cl distance clinic where I have people come in from all over the country to work on their swing speed. If you guys are looking to get one for yourself, go ahead and click the link down below in the description you'll find a link there that's gonna take you to their website. You get a special discount for being a follower of Top Speed Golf, and I know you guys are really gonna like this. Also, we talked about the, the power turn, getting that bigger turn. That's a great drill to pair up when you get yours in to see if you can increase your clubhead speed. I'm gonna play a preview of one of my best power turn videos here in a second. Just click the I card up on your screen or the link down below in the description for that video. You'll get instant access to it, and that's gonna be a perfect drill to pair up with your swing caddy when you get it in. So best of luck guys, let's go ahead and get started with that power turn. Hey, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's going to allow us to have a lot of power. So. We don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now, here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.